So we've beaten Castle Crashers with the bow, we've beaten it with the horn and shovel, so now it's time to beat the game using only bombs. And strap in because this has some of the highest highs and lowest lows out of any challenge run I've done so far. Now of course this challenge would be impossible to do using only the bombs from shops since you're only allowed 9 of them. So we are going to choose a character that does throw bombs as part of their magic and for this it's going to be the Conehead. I don't know if you know this but the Coneheads do throw bombs. So to begin this run as always we've got to defend the castle from the Barbarian and our bombs are actually doing 17 damage. For early game that is huge. But after defending this little shop here I went to go change my pet to the Beholder as it will give us a plus 4 to our magic damage as well as going getting Hattie's Sword, which will give a further plus three magic boost as well meaning we are now going to hit for 34 damage plus fire damage afterwards surely nothing can go wrong right we pretty quickly came across our first boss of the run which is this battling ram and to no one's surprise we breezed through it and soon we came across the second boss of the run which is the barbarian boss once again nothing too difficult here and we even got to practice on our throwing hand so unsurprisingly since we are literally throwing bombs at our enemies we are breezing through the these stages and honestly there isn't much to talk about during these stages it's just a lot of bomb throwing and waiting on the magic to recharge so less than 20 minutes into the run and we're already on the troll mother boss fight and who do you think would win the troll mother and her babies living in the forest or Moving on to the river area of the game and once again we do have a bit of a problem. I'm starting to notice a theme with the river as it's always a problem in these kind of runs. And this time it was the bats as they had a really strange hitbox. So you had to throw the bombs to the left of the bats and that's where it would hit them. But by the time I properly figured it out I was low on health and did unfortunately die. But I did use this opportunity to go restock my healing potions and also buy some bombs from the shop. So we jumped back into the river to give it another go and you can just see how how annoying these bats hitboxes were. Next was the catfish fight and very annoyingly we couldn't actually destroy the furball to do a proper damage phase. This meant all of our damage on the catfish was when it had its very high damage resistance, meaning that we were only hitting for 8 damage per bomb. So it took quite a few damage phases to defeat this catfish but towards the end this happened. Demon, yes, sorry. Did I just destroy- I- I- Dude, I just destroyed the furball as we killed him, that's crazy. So of course on my last bomb, it destroyed the furball, meaning we could have done normal damage without the resistance. So I was pretty annoyed after wasting quite a lot of time on this boss, so I decided to go bully some bears to release some stress. Ah, the industrial revolution and its consequences. Moving into the cave, and the slimes actually weren't that bad, and soon enough we went against my favorite boss in all of the game. That of course being PP Strello. As tradition on this channel, we of course have to glitch him out at at least once. Uh, never change PP Strello, never change. Of course this boss fight was a breeze so we could move on to the flowery field. What a lovely field full of nature and flowers, are they beasts pollinating the area? Wait, no, Conehead don't throw bombs, Conehead no, why? On the wedding part of the game we could finally get our revenge on the other Coneheads and give them a taste of their own medicine. Man this felt good, I can finally show them all the pain and suffering they've been giving us Castle Crusher players for years. But moving up to the Groom boss fight, we actually did a lot of damage, but unfortunately so does the Groom. So after getting Beybladed on, I went to the shop to get some more healing potions and did it all again. But this time I defeated the Groom using only bombs and honestly there's just something so poetic about that. Next was the carriage fight with the giant troll and as you can imagine it was extremely easy but what wasn't easy was the next cave section. So when you think of the most annoying enemies who do you think of? Maybe the cone heads because of their bomb throwing and heavy juggles? Maybe they're thieves because of their tendency to run away and shoot arrows? Could it be the cave slimes who have a lot of health and make it very difficult to hit them? Well ding 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 because they are the three enemies we are fighting next. Behemoth, behemoth, was it a bad day at the office what, what, what was this but after going through that hell surely it was going to be easy from here Luckily though, it is just more cone heads, so you just gotta deal with the heavy juggling and the bombs, but just get through it and it'll be okay. Oh, and did I mention that fire demons have a massive resistance to bombs? That's 8 damage, that is the number 8, and they have 200 health. Luckily though, it is only 1, and I'm sure there's not gonna be that many later on in the future. Next was the Cyclops boss fight, and as long as you can get the timing down, this fight is not too bad. The Cyclops is very predictable and provides large damage windows, so as long as you're patient, you you can get this boss down pretty easily. Oh hey, there's a massive lava pit in the middle of this arena. Cyclops, watch out for the lava pit. Oh no guys, he has AirPods in. What has this channel become? 
Next was Lava World and oh, Lava World. So as mentioned earlier, fire demons have a big damage resistance to the bombs, meaning we're only hitting them for 10 damage. And with them having 200 HP, that means it takes about 20 bombs per fire demon. And trust me, there are a lot of fire demons in Lava World. So after getting to about halfway through Lava World, I did unfortunately die and I had to redo it all over again. And there are no checkpoints in Lava World. You start from the very beginning, even if you die on the second boss fight. Yeah, second boss fight, there are two. But for the first boss fight, it is actually a gimmick boss, meaning you can only damage it with the sandwiches. However, if you throw a bomb and then immediately eat a sandwich, you can actually do damage with that bomb but that damage is kind of terrible and trust me we did a lot of testing on this and it is close to impossible to get this done on paper yes you can technically beat this boss using only bombs but in practice it will take an extremely long time and a high skill window and i have one of them you can guess which one but luckily the second boss can be damaged with bombs but with that being said of course the final boss had to have damage resistance to bombs too and guys i'll be honest this was rough. A boss that only takes 7 damage per bomb, a fire demon that will never go away, it will always be there, and a massive boulder that would constantly drop down that I had to dodge. This was a real test of endurance and skill, but eventually I was able to defeat the final boss of Lava World and progress from this area. Next was Industrial Castle, and this area is actually regarded as one of the more difficult areas of the game, but after what I've just been through, this was like the gift from Behemoth. 67 damage per bomb bomb. Lava World made me forget I was actually quite OP at this point. And I forgot to mention, but we went and grabbed the Unicorn Horn, which gives a plus 6 to magic damage. So plus 6 from the Horn and plus 4 from the Beholder means a plus 10 to magic overall. That is huge. So this meant that the Industrial Machine was a complete breeze, as this boss fight kind of relies on you having some range, as melee damage isn't very optimal. So after defeating the Industrial Machine comes a very important choice. Does the industrial prince live or die? And going off my recent poll, a lot of you guys really want him to die. However, my chat was actually 50-50 on this decision so it went down to a coin flip. And he lived. Maybe he'll go start that charity. And after a quick boat trip across the ocean which had a bit too much bomb sounds going on. So we landed in the desert area which is one of my least favourite areas in the game. However, we were actually quite strong at this point doing a lot of damage and melting a lot of enemies. Meaning it didn't take long until we came across the UFO boss fights and we were chunking the health bar. To no one's surprise, the inside of the alien ship was extremely easy and actually what was surprising was beating the escape scene first try. In fact, things were really looking up in this run. We were melting enemies and breezing through all parts of the game so there was nothing that could really bring me down never mind next was the marsh level which we were hitting for 85 plus 22 fire damage our bombs were hitting for over 100 damage so you could imagine when we came across the troll mother for a second time well we gave her that oppenheimer treatment next was the corn boss fight which is regarded as one of the most annoying bosses in all of the game but was surprisingly not that bad with this build it still took quite a long time to defeat the corn boss because no matter what you do it's always going Going to take a long time so the corn boss eventually died and we were rewarded with the horn allowing us to move on to the next area of the game and honestly there's not too much to say 99 damage per bomb and we were just shredding the area so for the medusa boss fight once again we were chunking the health bar and not really struggling but if you didn't know you could actually knock her own snakes back at her to do 20 damage so we decided to try and finish her off with one of her own snakes and after getting the correct timing the medusa boss finally died Next was the full moon level which is regarded as one of the hardest non-boss areas of the game. And to begin this level we've got to go through three beefy enemies. These are especially annoying because you can't juggle them and they're also extremely aggressive. So meleeing them is pretty difficult. But since we had bombs that could be shot from a distance and did an insane amount of damage there was zero struggle here. And a little further up we actually didn't use ladder strats. I think this is the first time in any of my challenge runs where I actually never used use this strat which just goes to show how strong this build was because you almost need to use a ladder strat to get past this part and for the ice section a little further ahead the hardest part was destroying the ice that the 
Eskimos was hiding behind. As we were hitting the Eskimos for 72 damage per bomb, it meant it took longer to destroy the ice versus the enemy, meaning it didn't take long at all until we was on the Frost King's boss fight. Similar to the Corn boss, the Frost King is regarded as a very annoying boss since he has the tendency to only appear for a few seconds before teleporting away, meaning your windows for damage are pretty small. On top of that, he also freezes you, meaning that you have to avoid being frozen to get your damage to begin with. We were hitting for 86 per bomb, so damage was not an issue. So soon enough, the Frost King was defeated and we saved the princess. Moving on to the final part of the game, and do you remember at the start of the video when I said that this has the highest highs and lowest lows? Well, here's the lowest low of the run. So the cult minions have a 100% immunity to my bombs, meaning no matter what level I am or how much magic I have, I will always do one damage per bomb. And the cult minions have 190 health. So doing the math, that meant we had to hit 190 bombs per cult minion. There are 12 cult minions to kill here. So that means we got to do 12 and times it by 190 and that equals 2,280. That is how many bombs we have to throw to kill all the cult minions. And that's assuming every bomb we throw will hit, which was definitely not the case. So this, no joke, took me over an hour to do. That's right, I sat there and threw bombs doing one damage for over an hour. So if you haven't already, a like on the video will go a long way as it would help fund me for my therapist. So after a painstakingly amount of time, we make it on to the first of the four final bosses. The first boss was the painter boss, which actually wasn't too bad. All we had to do here was burst damage the boss with our bombs and destroy the paintings with our bombs too. This meant we didn't have to sacrifice our health in order to destroy the paintings since we did a lot of ranged damage. So, one down, three to go. The Undead Cyclops was our second boss and this was actually a lot easier than the Painter. If we got high enough, we could actually avoid the damage from the boss and just keep spamming our bombs, meaning we could do very consistent fast damage and avoid taking damage. And during the invincible parts of the fight, you already know we're on that peepee ground strat, looking like a traffic cone over here. So two bosses down, two to go. So the Necromancer fight, which is notorious for being the hardest boss fights in all of the challenge runs I do, was actually not bad at all. Since we had bombs that did a lot of damage and also stunned enemies such as the beefies, all we had to do was stay high in the sky and just spam the bombs. This would do quite a bit of splash damage down below as well as stunning the beefies, reducing the chances of being picked up and thrown. The only real problem during this fight was the fire demon, as once again he had a massive damage resistance to our bombs. And after our first try, we actually defeated all of the enemies. And the necromancer himself was so easy. I think this could be classed as bullying. This has never happened in any of the challenge runs I've ever done. I really struggled on the cult minions getting to these bosses, but then found the bosses themselves really easy. And this is why I love doing these challenges on Castle Crashes because it really changes up the game. But who knows, maybe the final boss will actually be hard for once. Nope, 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 and nope. Yeah, so to no one's surprise, the final boss was a complete pushover. But I mean, look at the dude, he, he's literally a floating ball. After defeating the final boss, we land on the crystal, catch the princess and ride it all the way back to the castle. And all we had to do to end the run was kiss the orange princess. That was beating Castle Crashers using only bombs. Like I said at the start of the video, this had the highest highs of any of the challenge runs I've done, but the lowest lows too, as most areas of the game were extremely easy and didn't feel like a challenge at all. But that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.